What if AI can help you get better at 3D modeling? Well, today I'm putting that to the test. And I don't just mean giving it an image or a prompt and having it create the entire 3D model for me. There's no fun in that, and I definitely would not get any better at 3D modeling doing that. But what I will be doing is asking ChatGPT and Midjourney for concept art, reference images, something that I can use to build my 3D model so that the only thing I have to focus on is creating the 3D model. Will it work? I don't know. Let's find out. But first, Overture sent me two giant boxes of filament to test out for them. And so before we jump right into the computer and start designing, let's unbox this filament and see what we're working with. We've got Easy PLA Beige Pumpkin Orange. Yolk Yellow. Matte PLA Butter Yellow. Matte PLA Matte Beige. Ooh, I love it. I already use this color and I love it. I use it as my beige most of the time. Easy PLA Pine Green. Magenta. And the last, Cobalt Blue. Okay. All right, so we are in the computer. We are with ChatGPT. I am gonna use this to help me come up with some ideas for things that I can 3D model using all of these colors that we were given. So first I need to prompt ChatGPT to come up with some easy to intermediate objects that I can 3D model. All right, it's coming up with some ideas. Next, I'm gonna use ChatGPT to come up with some prompts for Midjourney to give me some concept art for my 3D models. Told it I need a reference image, give me a prompt and start with number one. Okay, so it wants me to make a retro camera pencil holder. <laughs> we'll see about that. Okay, control C, we're gonna copy that. All right, I think I can do this. But I feel like if I did something this complex, it might take up all of the time I have available. Let me see if it can crank out a few more ideas and then we'll go from there. We'll see if it can give us something a bit simpler and if not, we'll move on to the next design. And I didn't even get any black, so I wouldn't be able to use the black. Okay, that is much simpler. I think something like maybe these two. I think I could make this one. Let's come over here. Once I had a reference image, I headed over to Onshape and got right to work. I started by brainstorming the size of the box. Okay, camera time. And first, I guess we need to figure out how big it's gonna be. I'm gonna get some paper. Paper. So I'm imagining like that maybe. Handy dandy tape. I don't have any fancy tools. Sometimes I even just use a ruler. Height. Once I had a good sketch, it was time to begin. I started out with a simple rounded rectangle, thickened it to create the base shape, and then began adding the details. Okay, we're gonna shell to start to make sure that doesn't cause an issue later. For this first design, I didn't focus on making it too detailed, and I also didn't make it single color printer capable. I think that's actually pretty good. I did cut out the buttons and the black parts to save some color changes, but this was just my first design of the challenge and I kind of just wanted to get something on the printer. I think that's pretty good. All right, I'm gonna try and prepare this to slice and print and see what happens. I think that's gonna look pretty nice. All right, I think this is what we're gonna go with for the camera. First attempt, we'll see how it goes. I'm gonna get the filament loaded for this and then we'll be ready to move on to whatever we choose for the next print. Since the edges of these were a little bit dinged up, I added some spool ring adapters, which hopefully will allow these to roll effortlessly. Now that the first design was printing, we could move on to design number two. I really liked the camera concept, so I got ChatGPT to come up with some other camera styles that I could try and model. And boy, did it do just that. Ooh, these are so cool. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Okay, we're just gonna move on 
to this one first because I have so much work to do. And that we did. But before we jump back into Onshape, let's take a look at Skillshare, the sponsor of today's video. As you can see, I've been trying to work on my 3D modeling skills. One thing that's been crucial to my success has been Skillshare. They have tons of classes that have been built specifically for creatives and even better, creative businesses. So right now, I may be wanting to work on 3D modeling, but next week, I might want to get better at making YouTube videos, product photography. Wherever my creativity takes me, I know Skillshare will be there to help me learn. And that's why today, I'm partnering with Skillshare so that the first 500 people to use the link in my description will get a free month trial of Skillshare. So let's get started today and let's learn something together. Now, let's get back to the design. The next design ChatGPT called a box camera. It's not something I'd ever heard of, but I picked this design because it had easy shapes to model. I thought it would be a good chance for me to practice designing everything to print in parts. I wanted this one to be a box with a lid, so I really had to think about the design and how that would work around the lens. This design took me a bit longer, but I really wanted to take my time with it and do a good job. I planned on doing one more camera after this one, kind of like a final test. I could already tell I was getting better even from just doing the one design before this, and so I knew if I could do a good job with this one, learn everything I could, I'd be ready to take on my final design. Okay, I think my camera is pretty much done. We've gotten two cameras done today, which is super cool. I'm gonna load the filaments for this, get it printing, and see what's next. The parts are done for this box camera, the camera number two. Camera number one is still finishing up. It has about 45 minutes left. It paused overnight, AMS issue, but should be done very soon and it's looking really good. So I wanna dry fit these and make sure that my design is okay. So we've got the pink that fits pretty perfectly, the box, lid goes on and off. It could be a bit more snug on the top, so I might adjust that whenever I fix the top. But as far as dry fit, I think all of these are going to turn out pretty stinking nice. Yeah, that's the only one that was even close, but those buttons fit perfectly. The top fits pretty cool, and that button fits well as well, so. All right, so we're almost finished with the prints from yesterday. I got this one off the printer just now and I love it. I love these two colors together. This teal, they called it pine green, but it's giving me teal vibes. It's my favorite color that they sent me. And this easy beige also looks really cool too. So I'm really digging this camera and this design here. I have tested every one of the easy PLAs and they all actually turned out really nice so far. I'm reprinting the another yellow box to see if I can clean up some of these issues. I still need to print the black and the buttons for this. And so that leaves both of the matte PLAs. And I think I wanna come up with one more camera design, probably still along the lines of this vintage camera look because I really, really like this. Maybe I'll come up with some other way besides just like an open box. Maybe I'll combine it with an idea similar to this where it's like an actual box. But I think I'm also gonna work in this teal, this pine color, because I just love it so much. So I think these three colors are gonna give me a really cool look now that I've seen what this easy PLA looks like. It's very matte, it's very clean, very fond of it. One more camera to go. We've somewhat picked our color palette. Now we just have to get the design, print it, and we will be ready to see the final reveal. All right, so I think this is gonna be my final 
camera. I like the concept of this one. I get to give another attempt at this dial here on the top. It's got some different levels here. I can break that apart and try to print this all completely as a single color printer, like print in parts put together. That's the plan. This is the final camera for the video. Let's do it. My final camera design. Man, I can't believe we're already here. I designed this one to be a bit bigger than the original vintage camera box, but still the same general shape. Next, I focused on the top and bottom pieces. I started with the bottom since it was simpler, and I knew I could just mirror it to the top later. The curved lip on both ends was a bit of a challenge, but eventually I was able to come up with something that I was pretty happy with. <laughs> and that is good enough. Next, I worked on all the pieces for the top. Everything went smooth, but I wasn't sure how I wanted to handle the eye piece. At the last minute, I cut it out to be printed and glued on separately, since I realized it probably would have needed supports, and I wanted to avoid needing supports if possible. Last was the lens, made quick work of that, and then we were ready to print. That's so exciting. I think I'm done. I'm so proud of this. All of my parts have finished printing. I ran them overnight, so I haven't even seen them yet. They're just sitting on the printers. Here's everything. And I think from a first glance, I'm pretty pleased with what I'm seeing, but I don't know if anything fits together yet. Everything is looking good so far. Let's add some glue and bring this to life. The lovely 3D glue. First camera box. Perfect. And I only put glue on this bottom half so that the box can still close around this thing. I'm almost out of my first bottle of glue. Okay. And then we have the buttons. box camera. When I test fitted this, it didn't need glue, so I'm just going to leave it without glue for now. We made it to the end. I feel very proud of the models and the prints that I have created. I'm very excited to show you. First up, we started with this one. This was the very first model that I attempted. I think my model represents the reference image pretty well. I didn't design this one to necessarily be print in parts entirely. You do need a multicolor printer to be able to print this one, but I did cut out the black parts and the buttons to try and save a few color changes. It still was a super long print, but I'm happy with the way that it turned out. It was really good practice learning to cut out these parts and have the tolerances accurate so that whenever I glued them in, they fit perfectly, flush, clean, and it looks really, really nice. I think it's a good size storage box. You can set it on your desk and drop some pencils into it or keep different odds and ends in it. I don't know. I think it's a really cool looking vintage camera. And for my first attempt at this project or this challenge, I think it turned out pretty nice. And the colors on these are incredible too. They didn't send me a black, so I kind of cheated, but I still used Overture Black. So we'll just say an asterisk, I cheated, I guess. But I added the black because a camera lens is black and I think it really needed it. But besides that, these were both printed with the Easy PLA and I really like it. You can see a bit of banding on the edges, which is maybe from a bit of bed adhesion issue. 
You can see down at the bottom, it's kind of warping around the edges. We'll just chalk that up and say it's a bed adhesion issue. But besides that, I really like this matte texture, matte finish that this easy PLA is giving us. Big fan of this one so far. Next up, we had a box camera. And I had never even heard of a box camera. It may not even be a real actual thing, but ChatGPT and Midjourney were able to provide me with a box camera and I turned it into this. And it's a nice, it's a workable box. You can see the lens here and the top is cut out so that it just like, it's on there perfectly. I'm not in love with this design. It's giving me more washing machine vibes than it's giving me actual box camera or camera vibes, I guess. I maybe would have needed to make this lens part a bit longer to make it look more like a camera. It was still good practice for me to learn how to set my tolerances and cut the shapes out and print in parts and then make sure that the box lid can actually work around this lens here on the front. I did end up having to print this box three different times to make sure that the lid tolerance worked. The first time I used an offset of 0.2 millimeters, that was too loose. Then I went to no offset. That was way too tight. I could not get the lid off anymore. And so I landed in the middle at 0.1 as my offset distance, and it actually worked out pretty nice. And again, I love these filaments. The Easy PLA is just matte and clean and pretty and easy. I didn't really have any issues besides these large pieces coming up from the bed. It happened on pretty much every single one of them. The corners kind of wanted to lift off and so it created a bit of warping on the corners. But besides the minor bed adhesion issues on corners, I think this filament has printed wonderfully and I'm very happy with it. I like this little box and it taught me a lot about printing in parts, which prepared me for my final design, this super cute vintage camera box. And I'm actually printing another colorway because the original image had this yellow color as the actual camera body. And so I have an extra yellow camera body. I'm just printing all of the extra parts right now, which should be done soonish. But I decided to give it a shot with the actual yellow just to see how it looks because I think the yellow and this tan actually do end up looking really good together. But overall, I'm really happy with this box. The tolerance on the lid, I think, is kind of perfect. It comes off not too easily, though. I don't like when you pull the lid off or you don't... If someone comes to pick up the box, I don't really want the lid to just fall off. I like that there's a little bit of grasp to it to hold it in place. And I bet over time it would eventually uh, get to where it's super smooth going on and off, which is nice. All of this was printed in parts and then assembled. And so this is my first actual 3D model that I've printed like this. This little box is probably my favorite thing that I've ever 3D modeled. And it probably wouldn't have been possible if it weren't for ChatGPT and Midjourney giving me the reference images. So. Is it exactly like the original reference image? No. Does it look close enough? Yes. And I learned so much making this little box. I'm very happy with it. If you are interested in printing this vintage camera box, it will be available to the top tier members of my Patreon team. And also it will be on my things profile. So if you would like to print this and support the channel, it will be there for you. I had so much fun making this video. I started out here, which is cool. I like this box, I'm happy with it. And I ended here. Just the difference in these two is crazy. I got so much better at 3D modeling from the start and to the finish. And so I'm gonna keep this video style, video series, going in the future. I loved asking ChatGPT and Midjourney for these reference images so that my creativity could come out in the actual 3D modeling. I didn't have to spend time coming up with the idea and going back and forth about, well, this look good, should this be here? What about this feature? I had a reference image and I created it and it allowed me to get better at 3D modeling and that was the point of this challenge and the point of this video. And so hopefully you are able to take away something from this as well. Even if you don't use ChatGPT or Midjourney, hopefully you can find a reference image and you can start practicing creating 3D models because I had a ton of fun with this and I know you're gonna have a lot of fun with it as well. So 
Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Remember, if you are interested in the files, they will be available on Patreon and Fangs. It's all linked in the description. Thank you to my Patreon members for all the support. Without you guys, I could do literally none of this. That's all we got for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.